My garage is my happy place. A garage is a space with endless possibilities. There's definitely some really cool garages out there. People are saying, where are you going to put the cars? That's like nauseating to me, putting a car in here. Neighbors come in and just be like, oh my god, I didn't realize this is what you do in here. This is amazing. I can build it exactly how I want to. Artists are drawn to unique spaces. What's cool about this space is that it could be your typical garage. We could park cars in here, we could park our tractors in here, but we use it as a studio space, we use it as a creative space. People come down here that are working with our horses and they kind of expect this to be the barn for the animals, and it's not, it's, it's me. <laughs> My name is Don Clark. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. We're out here near Seattle in Maple Valley, and our company's called Invisible Creature. We wanted to choose a name that was pretty ambiguous. We didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves into like one type of design. We just wanted to be this thing that people didn't really know, you know, <laughs> what it was. We wanted to have a mascot. We wanted to have just this creature our one-eyed mummy mascot that we interpret in merchandise and toys and everything, I thought the barn could kind of be its own thing too. We put the barn on a lot of different things. We have it on shirts and on the back of product merchandise. and We have a toy version of the barn. We use it almost like a little second mascot now. So it's become kind of synonymous with the name Invisible Creature. I wasn't planning on ever working in a barn. A barn studio was never <laughs> something um, I thought about until we found this property. When we came and looked at the spot, there was no one out here, and you know, I just kind of walked down here. Everything's dusty and dark, and, and I walk up, and I'm like, oh man, this space up here. When I saw it, I also thought friends and clients would dig coming out here just because it's so different. Clearly it needed a ton of work, but I had the vision of like, okay, with some elbow grease, this can be a pretty special place. I always kind of envisioned clients could come out here Friday afternoon, let's talk, have a meeting, and then kind of hang out. It's like my, my living room, basically. <laughs> I wanted to keep the DNA of this old barn intact. I love the old wood, the patina of some of the material here in the barn, but mixing it with new material, we just basically put a new face on it. We put on a metal roof and added some commercial grade glass garage doors, modernized it with everything that a design studio would need. I wanted the light to be able to come in. When both garage doors are open, there's this kind of seamless transition between the outdoors and inside the space. I love the openers because they're off to the side, they're inconspicuous. The fact that I can push a button on my phone and let someone in when I'm not home is pretty awesome. We started this company in 2006. Basically my brother and myself, we've been partners in music and art for as long as we can remember. We got our start in the music industry creating album packaging. Both of us were in bands. My brother still is in a band. We started a band called Demon Hunter and the band kind of took off. That was like 20 years ago almost. So the band is bigger than ever. I left the band about 12 years ago. I'm a super fan of the band. <laughs> I get to watch what he's doing now with it and I could never keep up with the band now or the music they're putting out. It's just, it's so great. So he's pretty busy with that, but he's also a designer as well. And he lives a mile down the road. He has his own studio. We started doing a lot of silkscreen posters, which is a way for music fans to kind of have something that represented their favorite band or a moment in time or a concert. That really allowed us to start flexing our illustration shops and that set the stage really for kind of what we're doing now. What we found is that 
art directors, creative directors, designers are buying the posters and getting inspired by them and they also happen to work for larger companies and are asking us to kind of come on board to work with them. So from gig posters to commercial art and music ended up being the catalyst into that world. Something I'm always thinking about is art and making things. A space that represents that or cultivates that is special. In a way, I've kind of tried to make this space like a visual representation of what it looks like in my head. Just the stuff I love and kind of surrounding myself with that. Whether these are just like, you know, three-dimensional cartoons that are on your shelf or objects that make you smile, things that inspire me. Some people think nostalgia is a dirty word or, you know, um, I, it's my favorite word. <laughs> One of my favorite words. You know, it's it captures a moment in, in your life when you felt safe. You had your whole life in front of you. These products that are, you know, in our office and things that I collect or the, the, the type of work I like to do, I hope brings you back to a time when things seemed brighter for whatever reason. I'm very inspired by the optimism of the post-war era, which is mid-century in America, specifically Southern California. Film, animation, illustration, music, that whole era was a very optimistic time. There was a lot of color and everything seemed to be brighter. I was born in the 70s, so I didn't experience that era. And I know it wasn't perfect, but when I look upon that era and the art that was coming out, it feels really magical. Our grandfather was an illustrator at NASA and was always a huge inspiration to us and was kind of proof positive that you could have a blue collar, nine to five punch the clock job as a designer and got paid to, to draw spaceships and planets and creatures and we always thought that was super cool. I'm always kind of thinking about what is it that I love about art and how can I put my spin on it as invisible creature. Like our own products that we put in our shop, that's where our heart's at, the fun stuff that we like to create. Hopefully clients will take notice and call us to make some for them, and that happens a lot as well. I'm lucky enough to work on books. We sell our own line of shirts, hats, beanies, hoodies. We sell lots of posters and prints, and then of course toys. I'm an illustrator, I draw pictures, I don't produce hard goods, but we know a lot of super talented people that know what they're doing and they can you know, interpret our art into three-dimensional objects and whatever we dream up. I'm the one that sees all the orders come in and I see so many repeating names. I'm super grateful for those people because they're paying attention to what we're making and they're buying everything that comes in or, or most of it and it's that repeat person that I'm thinking about too like you know are they gonna dig this is this gonna make sense every person that buys something from our store I'm really appreciative that they took a chunk out of their paycheck and bought a toy or a shirt or a hat I'm thankful for what I get to do and it's never lost on me how lucky I have it that I get to work in a barn and, and draw pictures every day is pr pretty great. <laughs>